everyone. Welcome to the third video for Math 9 ASI. Uh, today we're going to be going over the different properties of limits. So let's go ahead. So our first one is the constant property. So if f of x is equivalent to b for some constant b, then we have that the limit as x approaches c of our f of x, which is b, is going to be equal to b. So basically what we're saying is if our function is just a constant number, then the limit as x approaches anything is just going to be equal to that number. So in this example, we have let c equal 2 and f of x equal 5. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 of 5, which is just going to be 5, right? Our second property is the identity property. So if f of x is equal to x, then the limit as x approaches c of x is just equal to c. So we can think of that, we're just plugging in c for x essentially here, and we're getting c as an output. So here's an example. We have let c equal 2 and f of x equal to x. So our limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to limit as x approaches 2 of x. So we just get 2 as our output. The third property. So from here on, I think until number 8, we're going to be assuming these properties. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x is going to be some constant l. And the limit as x approaches c of g of x is going to be equal to some constant k. So number three, this is our sums and differences. So if we have the limit as x approaches c of f of x plus or minus g of x, then it's just equal to the limit of f of x plus or minus the limit of g of x, which is just equal to k plus or minus l. So you can basically just distribute the limits to each of them, do them each separately, and then evaluate after. So let's look at an example. Let's let l equal 2 and k equals 3. So here we distribute the limit here like that. And then we evaluate each limit separately. So we have the limit as x approaches c of f of x, is, we have is 2. And the limit as x approaches c of g of x is 3. And then we can go ahead and add them after we've evaluated the limits. And we get 5 as our final answer. OK. So number 4, we have scalar multiples. So if b is a constant, then we can go ahead, if we have the limit as x approaches c of b times f of x, we can pull the b out and then evaluate the limit of f of x separately and then multiply b times the limit we get. So let's look at an example of this. So let's here let b equal to 2 and l equal to 6. So if we have the limit as x approaches c of 2 times f of x, we can pull the 2 out. So now we have 2 times the limit of as x approaches c of f of x. And we know what that is. We're given that it's 6. So we have 2 times 6 is 12. OK? Number 5 is going to be the product identity. We have, if we have the limit as x approaches c of the two functions f of x times g of x, we can distribute the limit to both of them, just like addition, and do each one separately. And we'll have l times k at the end. So our example is we distribute. We have the two functions, limits separate. So this one evaluates to being 4, we're given. This one evaluates to 5, we're given. And so we can just write out 4 times 5 is 20. And now we have quotients, which is similar. But you have to make sure that your limit on the bottom is never going to be 0, because we can't have a 0 in the denominator, right? So we have limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x. We can distribute the limit to the top and bottom separately, evaluate each one, and we'll have L divided by K. So let's look at an example of this. If we have L is equal to 15, K is equal to 3. When we evaluate the top, we get 15. When we evaluate the bottom, we have 3. Then we can just calculate that after and get 5. Almost done. Just a couple more to go. We have powers. So if we have Limit as x approaches c of f of x to the n, to some power n, where n is a constant, we can basically pull the limit inside and take the whole limit that we evaluate and put that to the nth power. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, and then that's just l to the n. So looking at this example, where l is 3 and n is 2, we have f of x squared 
So we can pull the limit inside. So we have in parentheses, limit as x approaches c of f of x, and that's all squared. Uh, we know that's 3 because l is equal to 3. So we have 3 squared is equal to 9. Okay. Uh, roots is going to work similarly, where if we have limit as x approaches c of the nth root of f of x, we can pull the limit inside. So we have the nth root of the limit of x as x approaches c of f of x. An example here is if we have l is 8 and n is 3. So we'll have pull the limit in the inside and then evaluate that limit as we have 8 and the cube root of 8 is just going to be 2. The final one, and I think is probably the most confusing one, is composition. And now we have a different set of uh, assumptions we have to make. So let the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. That's the same. But here let's let the limit as x approaches l g of x equal to k. So here this l is what we're getting here, this value. And we're going to let g of l equal to k. It's very important that both of these conditions uh, are met in order for us to use this particular property. And if these are met, then we can have, if the limit as, sorry, the limit as x approaches c of g of f of x is equal to the limit as y approaches l of g of y. Right, you can see we're, we're basically pulling the limit inside here. We're evaluating this f of x here, and we get that that's equal to l. And then we take that limit as y approaches l of g of y. It's a little weird, but I'll try to I'll try to help you guys out if you need extra help on that. And we have one example I wanted to go through with you guys together. Uh, so I'm going to pause here and open up the whiteboard. So before we get to that other example, I wanted to do a quick example of composite. So here, when we're doing this problem, we want to think about how we want to. We kind of want to work from the inside first. So we have this limit, and we want to think about it being applied to the innermost portion first. So let's write that out. We have the limit as so x approaches 0 of x plus 1. Sorry. Uh, OK. And so now we can use our addition, distribute it to both of them. So we have limit as x approaches 0 of x plus the limit as x approaches 0 of 1. So the 1 on the left is just going to be our identity. Plug in 0 for x, we get 0. And the 1 on the right is going to be our constant. Plug in, well, we can't plug in. There's no x, right? So it's just going to be whatever number is there, which is 1. So we get our final answer is 1 for the inside part. And what this becomes is our l. This is our l limit. So now we can rewrite what we have over here in terms of that. So now we're going to have limit as we're going to choose a different variable. So we'll call this y approaches our l, which is 1 in this case, right? And we're going to have natural log of replacing what we used before with y. So now we have this limit as y approaches 1, natural log of y. And this is going to be one of those fundamental limits that's just useful to know where we just plug in one here. So we're gonna get natural log of one, which we should remember from natural logs, this is just gonna be equal to zero, right? So our final answer here is zero. Okay, so here's the example from before. Um, my approach to these kinds of problems is just gonna be distributing the limit and working on each piece, uh, each small piece, little by, by little, and then put everything together at the end. So we can distribute this x as limit as x approaches 0 to a couple things here. So let's write that out. We can distribute to this first element, which is x plus 2 squared. And by addition, we can distribute it to this one here. So let's write that as limit as x approaches 0 of x plus 1. And by our multiplication, or our product, we can put this limit over here. So we limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x. And now let's look at each portion of this by itself. So let's look at this leftmost one. So now we can do our power. We can pull out the squared.
like so. So now the squared's on the outside of our limit. And now we can distribute this limit to the x and to the 2. So let's write that as limit as x approaches 0 of x plus the limit. Oops, sorry. Still getting used to this. That's the limit. X approaches 0 of 2. Sorry. OK, that looks better. <laughs> And that's all going to be squared, right? And so the first one's identity, and the second one's constant. So we're going to have plug in for 0. We have 0 plus 2 squared. OK, so that part's we've eliminated all the, the limits, and we can just worry about that later. Continuing on, we have limit as x approaches 0 of x plus the limit as x approaches 0 of 1. So this is identity on the left and constant on the right. So plugging in 0, we have 0. And we have plus 1. So we can go ahead and add this down here. We know we're going to be adding this. So this is plus, well, let's just evaluate that. That's just plus 1. So let's look at the last portion. Uh, this is another thing you should probably just know, is that in the case of uh, taking a limit of e to the x, we can just plug in. So let's just plug in for our limit. We have e to the 0. And what's that? That's just going to be equal to 1. So let's pull, go ahead and pull this out over this way. So our final answer here is going to be 0 plus 2 squared plus 1 times 1. We can go ahead and simplify that down here as 2 squared plus 1, or 4 plus 1, or 5. Right? Okay, so that's the final answer. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. This stuff isn't super easy, so I understand if you need the additional help. Uh, you can drop a question down in the comments, or email me if you want to talk privately, or come to my office hours, which the times and uh, Zoom code will be down below in the description. Uh, and let me know if there's anything I can do to fix these videos, make them better for you guys, because I want to be as helpful as I can. Okay? Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you guys later.